Hey gang, it's Jay, and we are talking comms today, specifically radio comms. Um, this is a, a rabbit hole that we can is uh, is dark and deep and uh, can be complicated. But what I'm gonna go through, I'm not gonna get into the whole licensing hams, so on and so forth. It's just not a uh, not a conversation I'm gonna have. Uh, you do you, I do me, and uh, we all get along, right? But um, this is for more or less just the personal equipment that you would have on your body or on your kit. Um, it really what it comes down to is just what is your own SOP or what is your group's SOP. Um, you know, for most people, the way that I'm setting this up is for a small inner squad comms with the ability to be able to reach to a, um, a relatively nearby base station and or to be able to listen to communications traffic, whether that be, um, you know, listening to uh, uh, um, police, fire, EMS, um, Metro Park, Park Ranger, all of that kind of stuff, local ambulance services, um, a county emergency management systems, things like that, um, which your um, smaller handheld radios, to, and the examples I'm going to use are your traditional uh, Baofeng uh, UV5R radios, but um, you can do that with this. So, you know, that's something that definitely uh, pays dividends down the road when in the event of a situation happening where you're able to listen in as a, uh, um, to be able to gather intelligence, to be able to gather information, just to get that idea of what is going on in your immediate area. I think that's extremely important, and that's the, that's the part that we all need to be most concerned with, first and foremost. It's what's going on in my immediate area. Um, uh, before, um, you know, obviously, you uh, hopefully you've already done. If you haven't done them already, you better get on doing them as your area surveys so you start knowing what is... Um, what is where so you can start you know mapping everything out and start knowing who the players are in your uh, immediate uh, vicinity so anyways radios uh, i'm a b big believer in just having that standard radio setup um it can be you know you got two different ways you can go these are both your biofang uv 5rs and one has the extended battery on it and the other one has the standard battery to it the big thing with the two different batteries is for your smaller, your standard battery, you have to have a charging dock in order to put that into for charging. Where your larger battery setup, the nice thing with this is you have the ability to be able to, let me pop this off so you can see. So you have, there it is, you have a plug-in adapter so that you can actually plug this into your... If you have some sort of a battery bank or solar charging setup, you can actually plug that right into it via a USB cord and um, you're good to go. So you can charge that out in the field and um, have what you need so you can continue on with your field comms. All right, so I'm a big believer in make sure I would have one of, one of those for every single radio that you have. Um, plus, on the um, flip side, and I don't have one out here with me, but you'll see some images of it down below. Um, this also slides into a single mag pouch on any of your um, chest rigs, plate carriers, whatnot. This size fits really well, and you can still grab the top of it to pull it out. Where with the smaller ones, when you drop them in, you have to grab the antenna for pulling it out. So that makes, you know, just from fit and function that um, those are keys to that larger battery setup, okay? So that's extremely important. Another thing with your radios is make sure that you are, um, you're gonna use, if you're not programming them manually, you're gonna program them via a chirp program. Uh, make sure you have the appropriate cord for it. Obviously it comes, usually it comes with the, um, with the little disc for setting them up, but everybody in your group, set, them, set all of them up identically. Um, that way, instead of having to say, hey, turn to, you know, frequency, blah, 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 it's, um, you know, channel 1, channel 4, channel 6, or maybe in your SOPs you have, hey, at the, um, at the top of every hour, you're going to be listening to channel 3. At the bottom of every hour, you're going to be listening to channel 22, whatever it may be. Um, 
those are those are all things that you and your group are gonna um, agree uh, agree upon. But make sure they're all make sure they're all programmed the same. Now, some equipment that you want to make sure that you have with your um, with your radio setups, and this is and this is completely you know up to the individual or up to the group how you want to set this up. But I like to be I I like the ability to be able to expand further upon than just having a handheld radio in my pocket. A lot of it's going to depend on what I'm wearing and what I'm doing. Um, if you're set if you're um, set up with a uh, like a load bearing equipment where maybe that's just that's what you're always going to have on. Kind of like in the picture there down below, you can see how we have it set up. You may want to set up a. Um, a, uh, a, a routing cable with an external antenna. So this is something then that you can have hooked up to your shoulders, the, the shoulders of your LBE or even a uh, plate carrier. So that is set up there and then that way your routing cable can come and run down and instead of your normal antenna that's uh, on your radio, you just simply pop that off real quick and then screw that into it that way you're working off of an external now you can set your antenna up a little bit in a different position than having that especially on a, like a plate carrier where it may be tucked away under your arm where the antenna gets in the way this helps route it out of the way so I highly recommend some sort of a uh, external antenna with a external routing cable to it I think that will um, gives you a little bit more versatility in your radio setup the other thing that you want to look at, and this just helps prevent from having to pull the radio in and out of a pouch, is some sort of a mic system to it, some sort of an external mic. There's uh, literally a shit ton of them out there, all different brands, but these, the Baofeng ones, run off of the, uh, it has that double input setup that runs off the side of your radio. So that just simply, there's a small hole, big hole, make sure I know there's bunch of inside jokes that can go with that. Put the appropriate prong in the appropriate hole and um, now you have an external mic set up. So you have channel mode. So you have that and it's just a simple touch of the button for for talking then. All right. So that that's how you set up the external mic for that. And then you can clip that to a shoulder strap of a, uh, of a backpack, of a uh, LBE, or of a chest rig. So all of that hooks up real nice and easily. Now on top of that, so let's say you want silent comms, all right? So you don't want, every time it beeps at you, you don't want everyone in um, your vicinity to hear it. A lot of your external mics are going to have another plug-in port to it. You can plug in any kind of earbuds to it. Okay, plug right in. And then you have yourself quiet. So only you're going to hear what's going on off of this, but when you want to talk, you can still activate it. So kind of like your PTT, your push-to-talk system. Um, you can get really crazy, really expensive. You can get really inexpensive. Pay attention when you're looking for some sort of a PTT setup that... A lot of the more, I'm going to say, military-grade ones, um, has a different plug-in port to it, different size, so it's not always going to be compatible with everything else. So make sure when you're setting this up that you're not, um, you're not mismatching everything, otherwise you're going to have to order more stuff. So, and that's, um, we're trying to just keep it as simple as possible, obviously. So that there will route then your, what you're hearing to your ear, and you're good to go. Another thing with this, so let's say we're ditching this, okay, we're not going to worry about that. Let's say we're going off of our Ear Pro, okay. So your Ear Pro, make sure that you have a port on that. So now, what we can do is we can take a comms cable and we can plug that into both sides. So now we're going to plug that into our Ear Pro and we're going to plug the other end into our push to talk or our external mic. Now your sound is routed through your ear pro. When you want to talk, you're on this because it's here, so you're talking into that. Everyone's, you're hearing what everyone else is saying through this. So that's a great 
Once again, a great another way for setting up individual comms that's also going to translate to if you're hooking it up to a helmet setup, you have your ear pro hooked up to your helmet through your side rails. I took my, mine off to put onto this. Um, make sure you have some sort of a cable routing setup going on. I made this pouch for routing my, so I made it to where I can route my cables through the backside so that everything, all your cable management is hidden inside of there. So you can have your routing cable for your comms. You can, um, uh, uh, anything else, it, it's all going to be held external there so or, or internal so that way you don't have all these cables hanging around. So that's if you're, if you're running any kind of helmet system, bump helmet, ballistic helmet, doesn't matter. Um, that's very important that you can do that with your comms through this. All right. And then last but not least with comms, I'm a big believer of where if you're set up in a base camp scenario um, or a, you know, some sort of a forward base where you're going to be at the same spot for a while working in and out of it, I'm a big believer in having some sort of a, uh, I like having a roll-up J-pole antenna. So the nice thing about this is I can get this up 14, 15, 16 feet up in the air and I uh, have myself set up where I have 30 feet of paracord that is hooked up to a carabiner, and then I can either use the carabiner for weight or I can fill the bag up with dirt or rocks, attach that to it, and throw it up over a tree branch and be able to hoist my J-pole antenna up. So then that way you have some sort of a field expedience antenna set up so that you can increase, not just increase the range that you can communicate, but also increase the range with which you can receive. So if you're listening to information, maybe the area that you're in is several miles outside of town or uh, outside of the area where things are happening at least you know what that roll up j-pole antenna you can make your own you can buy these online um, once again this is designed to screw directly into so if you're doing this i suppose i should show it as an example right so once again we're just screwing that right on you can use your different like bnc connectors if you want to it's totally up to you but then that way you have that external antenna for working that as well so once again it's just that there's just enabling that is increasing your reach whether it's for communicating or it's for listening that is increasing how far away you're able to uh to connect to so that is really that's my comms talk i guess um one last point with this I'm gonna I'm gonna touch upon with comms and this is completely up to you. Obviously, um, in a normal everyday situation you have FRS, GMRS, mirrors, your ham bands, um, so you have all that, right? So some of the things that you may obviously uh, anybody who is a um, uh, you know who's a stickler for rules are gonna say, oh well no you can't you have to have a license to use GMRS. Oh no wait you gotta have a license for this. Oh, your um, biofang is not type 95 certified by the FCC. Uh, we're, we're not talking normal times. Um, we're talking, you know, uh, WROL situations, SH, um, TF uh, situations. So where your rule of law is, um, is non-existent. Um, I think the, for comms, you need to be able to practice and learn um, in all manners. Uh, um, if you really want to be a stickler for it, Mirrors is free. Um, Mirrors has some advantages and some disadvantages over like GMRS frequencies. But you can use external antennas um, upwards of, I think you can go as high as 60 feet, I believe. I might be wrong, but I know you can go up pretty, uh, pretty darn high. Um, your wattage is increased a little bit, and um, anyways, it's a great way to go for mirrors frequencies if that's what you want to use and not worry about the, uh, the ham fuds out there uh, going after you. Um, I know I'm going to catch some flack for that, but I really don't care. Uh, people need the info, and people need to know how to use it, regardless if they have a license or not. Um, just plain and simple, that's, that's the way I feel about it. So as long as you're practicing, learning, and doing it right, um, this way when it comes into the situation where you need to have it, you know how to use it. So get out there and practice with it. Get out there in your group, practice with your group. Um, 
practice situations where you need to um, talk to each other, um, practice your operating procedures, practice calling in and receiving salt or salute reports, um, practice changing frequencies in the field, have something set up where you know, okay, I know that, like I said, I, I, I'm repeating myself, but the top of the hour you're on one channel, bottom of the hour you're on another channel, and you just know to change it. Um, you don't need to announce it over the airwaves that that's what you're doing. So um, anyways, that's um, kind of calm setup 101 down and dirty um, for field use, for group use. So that's what I got for you guys. Um, if you have questions, put them down in the comments. If you have comments, good, bad, other, it's all good. Um, put them down below. This is how we, this is how we learn from each other is by getting this out there. I know things like uh, communications and medical um, aren't the sexiest things to talk about, but they're, um, they are perishable skills that you need to continue to use to practice and, um, and uh, encourage each other to practice. So practice makes perfect, and when the time comes, we're going to need it. So anyways, that's all I got. You guys keep getting out there. Take care. Keep training. Um, it's clown world out there. We got to keep going, and we, we got to keep doing what, you're, what we're doing, okay? So you, you all take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.